You want to have a nice looking lawn, but you're trying to figure out what's just an old wives' tale versus what is actually science-based to help you achieve that. Well, in this video, we're going to separate the facts from the fiction. We're going to give it to you straight here. I've got five different myths that I'm going to debunk in this video and tell you the truth from a lawn care professional, and we're going to get to helping you uh, have a nice looking lawn. Let's get started right now. Fact or fiction, the first one we're going to address is, does your neighbor's yard, the weeds in their yard, affecting your own yard? Or to maybe another one that I hear sometimes is, hey, the guy who comes and cuts my grass, he's got the weeds from the neighbor's yard that he mowed or some other yard he mowed, and now he comes and mows my grass, and that's affecting the quality of lawn, my lawn. Well, to address that, I want to show it to you uh, for one, and then I want to talk to you about what is true and what's false about that statement. Look at these two lawns here. You got one that has virtually no weeds in it, and the other it virtually is a weed laboratory, a weed experiment in and of itself. Why is it that there's almost no weeds over here and this is almost all weeds? Well, certainly there's some truth to what is being said by this, that, that weeds do certainly travel by wind, by birds, by all kind of different methods, and even by lawnmowers. Okay, so I'm not saying it's totally false. These weeds can definitely get over in this lawn. Scientific, nothing false about weeds traveling because that's uh, certainly a fact. But what I think the other part that we need to consider for our sake is, is that the only part of the picture? I mean, the truth is, if you're just trying to keep weeds out that way, and you're saying, you know, if only my neighbor didn't have weeds, then my yard would be weed free too. But the other side of it is, I don't know a single yard out there that's weed free, that's done so by just keeping the neighbor's weeds away from it or keeping their lawnmower washed off every time they mow the grass. Maybe that helps to a minimal extent, but a good weed control and fertilization program uh, is gonna do a great wonders. See, that's how you get results like this. Are these weeds gonna try to travel over here by wind or some other method? Of course, but uh, with a good weed control and fertilization program, then we can uh, create a healthy thick lawn over here that can help suppress the weeds even when they try to germinate in this lawn. The second one I wanna address is that bagging the lawn is better than mulching the clippings. Well, it depends on what you mean by better. When you say better, is it that my dog would have less clippings to track into the house or maybe uh, family members would, would have less clippings on their shoes when they walk through the house. If that's what you mean by better, then yeah, I could certainly see it being better. But from a lawn care perspective, usually those clippings uh, that are mulched in the lawn will break down over time, especially when the weather's warm, and they actually add nutrients back to the soil. So it's like it's, the lawn's actually fertilizing itself. Now, we want to supplement the lawn with more fertilizer, typically from a weed control and fertilization perspective to get a, a deeper green and a better color and all that. But uh, they can actually provide some benefit to the lawn. Now, the way I like to do it, just to give you specifics, and this may be even more applicable on warm season lawns, which is what I mostly deal with, is a lawn like this, Bermuda grass, it will go dormant uh, in the winter time. And in the first cut of the year, when I'm cutting this lawn, it's all dormant. What I want to do is I want to get rid of as much of that dormant grass as I can so that the, the sun can get down there and warm up the roots and it'll start putting up new growth from the ground up. So in that situation with a warm season lawn, particularly a Bermuda or Zoysia lawn, I can see a great advantage to bagging the clippings, maybe that first cut of the year or the first and second cut of the year, where you're primarily getting rid of that dormant grass. And again, that's going to allow the nutrients and the sunlight to get down there to the roots and hopefully give you a quicker spring green up. Another time you might consider bagging is if you, you waited a little bit too long to mow your grass, it's growing real fast, and let's say it's been two or three weeks since you've mowed it, then you might want to bag it just so that you don't have so much dead grass laying around on the lawn, which can be unsightly, and even in some situations cause a thatch problem uh, if you've got all those clippings laying there, which is not healthy for the lawn. But in a very general general sense, mulching those clippings, mowing it regularly can very much help the lawn provide some nutrients and help you actually have a better looking lawn with all the hassle of having to deal with those bad clippings. In reality, I don't mind if you bag your yard, it just seems like a lot more work to me. The third one on the address is watering lawn. I have customers that seem like they want to water lawn literally every day. And when I see a yard that has problems with it, one of the first questions I like to ask is, how many times are you running your irrigation system? And sometimes they'll very proudly say, I run it every single day for 10 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day and in my mind I'm thinking that's not 
not good? How can I tell them that that's not good? Well, think about it. What is uh, the natural course of rain? Now, we've had a rainy year this year, no doubt, but usually it doesn't rain every day for 10 minutes. And usually, if you think about a hot summer day and the lawn's kind of struggling and you get a little 10 minute shower, what helps more? A little 10 minute shower a few times a week or that deep soaking rain? that gets down to the roots. And usually it's that deep soaking rain. And so what we tell people typically, and it can vary from climate to climate, but usually we want them to water, you know, one time a week early in the morning and get you a, a real good soaking. So practically speaking, if I had an irrigation system and I had warm season turf or cool season turf during these growing times or when it needs that water, uh, I'm gonna say, you know, 25 to 30 minutes per zone early in the morning. And the reason we say early in the morning, we don't want that water sitting on the leaf all night long if you water in the evening the water sits on the leaf it can lead to fungus and watering regularly not only doesn't get it down deep enough to the roots but it can also cause problem with fungus issues because the lawn's constantly wet and also weed issues weeds like dove weed kalinga nutsedge they love wet lawns and if your yard is constantly wet it's not good I go through yards sometimes in the middle of the summer, super hot, and hadn't rained much at all, and I'm I'm squishing water under my boots as I walk through the yard. I think, why are they watering the lawn so much? This is absolutely not natural for the grass. And in years where it's raining plenty, you can turn your irrigation off altogether. And then if we went through a, a serious, serious drought, uh, and you were, were very, very dry and super hot, then maybe you want to go more than one day per week for a short season. The grass will use let you know when it starts turning brown it's not happy it needs some water if you have seasonal flowers something like that I could recommend watering those far more often maybe every other day for like a five minute little shower if you had your irrigation setting the next one I want to mention is mowing tall or mowing short is better some people say no you gotta mow it short that's the way you're gonna get the best yard or I'm gonna mow it short because I'm gonna mow those weeds down real short and that way they won't grow back other people say no I'm gonna mow my grass real tall because that'll that'll help it you know well the truth is you need to understand uh, specifically for your grass. I mean, I'm standing on this Bermuda grass lawn. Bermuda grass is often used on golf courses as a putting green, mowed extremely short, and it's often baled as hay for cattle and horses. So you can uh, have a great variance. More important on this particular grass, at least, is, is tall or short, is the frequency of your mowing and how much you're taking off. So the rule of thumb is not to mow off more than a third of the blade of grass. And typically when it starts growing, uh, if you're gonna keep it short, you're gonna have to mow mow it every three or four days often. So as it's uh, growing very, very fast in the summer months, I'm using Bermuda as an example, I'm gonna gradually raise my deck unless I'm willing to mow it every three or four days because I don't wanna mow more than a third of the grass blade off at any given time. If you mow it too short and, and let it get tall and mow it down short, you could stress out the lawn which could cause some other problems. Other grasses, like many of our cool season grasses and even St. Augustine and some zoysia grasses, you can mow those a little bit taller. Centipede grass likes to be mowed very short and regularly. So uh, understand your specific grass type and don't be set on mowing it at one height. And again, you skip a couple of weeks, it gets real tall. Don't just insist that I'm always gonna mow it on the same level no matter what, because by mowing it real short after it's gotten tall, you could really stress out the lawn. Last myth I wanna debunk is this idea that more is better. And what I mean by that is some people think when they're fertilizing the lawn, you know, well, if a little bit of fertilizer is good, a lot must be great. Or when you're spraying weed control products on the lawn, you think, well, if a little bit will kill it, I bet if I triple it, it'll be really dead. Well, that's not good. Well, one, we want to follow the label on our herbicides. Well, the label is what is uh, legally required of you to do to use that herbicide on the lawn, but it's also science tested. And so they know when they create that label, what rates of the application is going to be uh, effective on killing the certain target get weed so if they give you a rate range there's no read to go above that rate or even below that rate because below it may not work at all above you're probably either wasting chemicals or possibly causing damage to the lawn similar we was talking about mowing the lawn different grass types have different requirements on how much fertilizer is beneficial unfortunately there's been a lot of research done on that so uh, again using Bermuda's example you could go um, low or higher on your rate of the nitrogen that you're gonna put out on the lawn, but with that higher nitrogen, you gotta be willing to mow the grass 
much more frequently because it is going to grow faster. For zoysia lawns, we try to stay around two pounds of nitrogen per calendar year. On the centipede lawn, I think the rule of thumb is not to go above two pounds of nitrogen per calendar year. So understand your specific grass type and the timing of when that fertilizer needs to be applied. And then also understand the difference between a slow release fertilizer and a quick release fertilizer. And if you're putting out a fertilizer, is it going to feed that lawn for four weeks or four months? Because that's very important to know not only when to apply the fertilizer and how much to apply, but how long is it going to last to know if I need to apply it more than once during that growing season. We didn't solve all the problems today, but hopefully it solved some of them. There's a couple links in the description below, but one's a link to a homeowner course that I sell that teaches you how to have a beautiful Bermuda and Zoysia lawn. It's a video course, and you can check that out on the link below. The other is for people who want to get in weed control and fertilization like me. I have a 12-month coaching program that I've started that is going well, and there's a link in the description to set up a free 15 minute call with me to see if it's a fit for you. It's for people with warm season grasses who are looking to get into the weed control and fertilization business like me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.